right now we're, we're doing a unit six test review. We're going over a quiz that we took dealing with exponents and radicals. Okay, so this is the problem we're currently working on, problem number three. Now, the very first thing that we have to do when simplifying this expression, we have to look at this power right here. This power is 3 over 2. And we have to apply this power using what's called the power property okay, to all of the powers. Now, does anybody know what power this 20 is being raised to? You're right. Power of 1. Just like 5 is being raised to the power of 1, even though you can't see it, x is being raised to the power of 1. So we're going to apply to every single one of these. We're going to multiply 3 over 2 times 1, 3 over 2 times negative 3, 3 over 2 times 8, and 3 over 2 times 9. We're going to do the numerator first. So here we go. In the numerator, you will have 20 to the power of 3 over 2. You will have x to the power of, what is negative 3 times 3? Negative 9, so this would be negative 9 over 2. Okay? Then we have y to the power of, what is 8 times 3? 24. What's 24 divided by 2? 12. Boom, that's why that's a 12. Okay? And last but not least, we have z to the power of, 9 times 3 is? 27, and that's over a 2. So that's everything that's in the numerator. Now I'm going to switch colors here. I'm going to change everything to red. But before I do that, I'm going to take 3 over 2, and I'm going to multiply it to all of these powers. So every power is being multiplied by 3 over 2. So here we go. So I have 5 to the power of I have x. X to the power of 3 over 2. I have y to the power of 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And to green. And last but not least, we have z. And we have 3 times 3, which is 9, and that's 9 over 2. Okay? Now, we simplified this right here in the graphing calculator, and I'll do it once more. I'll show you guys how to do that in the graphing calculator. So we're going to go right here. We're going to clear that out. And alpha y equals enter. Type in 20, raise it to the power of 3 divided by 2. Go down here, 5, raise to the power of 3 divided by 2, and voila, what do we get? We get an 8, which means this right here simplifies to an 8. Now, this is what everybody needs to do from here on out. We have to use what's called the quotient property. So I'm going to do x, then we're going to do y, and we're going to finish with z. So what's my numerator exponent? Negative 9 over 2, so I'm going to start with negative 9 divided by 2, I'm going to subtract this exponent, which is 3 over 2. Then we have y to the power of 12, and what are we taking away? We're taking away a 6, and last but not least, we're doing 27 over 2, and we're taking away 9 over 2. So this is where everybody should have finished up yesterday. Now these are our common denominator, all right? So we're going to simply just take negative 9 and minus 3 more. That gets us a negative 12 over 2. What is 2 over 12? So that becomes x to the negative 6. So we'll just leave that right now. Leave this right here. This one's easy. What's 12 minus 6? Yeah. 6. We're going to leave that right there. All right. This one right here, 27 minus 9 is 18. And 18 divided by 2 actually becomes 18 divided by 2. Okay. All right, so what do we have? We have x to the negative 6, we have y to the 6, we have z to the power of 9. All right, now let's put everything together. Okay, let's put everything together. I have x, right? What did we have? x to the power of 
negative 6. What is our y to the power of? 6. And what is z to the power of? None. Very good. Now, everybody, this technically is the right answer. But you're, here's what you're not going to see. On standardized tests, you're not going to see negative exponents. As far as part of the answer, most, most likely. Because really, we don't like to have negative exponents. So how do I rectify this situation? What is x to the negative 6 technically equal to? How can I make this negative exponent That's right, but I'm asking you about this particular side of the What do we call this place in a fraction? Oh, yes. So we put it in the, yeah. the what number goes here? One. This is the rule you need to know. If you have a negative exponent, you want to make it positive, just put it in the denominator. If it's already in the denominator, then what should you do? Shift it up into the numerator. Okay? So that, that's just an example. That's not a part of the problem. So, you're right. The last final answer is 8, y to the 6, z to the 9, over x to the 6. And why is the x to the power of 6 in the bottom? Because we it was a negative and we had to move it down to make it a positive. That's why the answer is B. Okay? That's why the answer is B. Whenever you guys are dealing with a problem that says you're dealing with a rectangle, <coughs> what do I expect you to do? That's right. To draw a rectangle. That's what I expect you to do. Okay? Just draw a rectangle. Now it says the rectangle has a length of 6x to the power of 4y cubed. Let me say 6x to the power of 4y cubed. And it says it has a width of, parentheses, 10x cubed y, close parentheses, squared. I'm going to put parentheses matter. Yes. That's what I want you to do first, right there. Where students make a mistake, is not the fact that they typically know that the area of a rectangle, because that's what we're looking for, what's the area of this rectangle. Typically students know the area of a rectangle is length times width. Okay? Where they mess up, I'm going to highlight, this is where they mess up. Right here. Because they forget that they're supposed to be squaring everything inside of this. What does 10 x cubed y close parentheses squared actually mean? It means you're doing that number to itself how many times? Uh, that's right. <clears throat> so we actually have to, if we use the power property, that's a 1. So what do we have to do? We have to distribute that 2 to the 1. We have to distribute that 2 to the 3. And we have to distribute that 2 to the 1. What is 10 times 10? Or what is 10 squared? 1. 100. Okay? What is x to the third times x to the third? You're allowed to add these exponents, but you can also multiply the 2 times the 3 and get x to the power of 6. What property are we using here? We're using the power property. What property are we using over here? We're using the product. The product property, what do you do with the exponents? You add them together. That's a y is a 1, that's y is a power of 1. What can I do with these exponents? Add them together and get what? y squared. But well, what is 2 times 1? 2 times 1 is also y squared. So this right here actually represents your width. That's your width. Okay? So in review, what do you have to do with this power? You have to apply it to every single term inside of that parentheses using the power property. If you separate this, then what can you use? You can use the product property. So there we go. Now we're going to do the length times the width. What is our length? Our length is 6x to the 4. That's right, x to the power of 4. y to the power of 3, or y cubed. And our width is 100x to the 
power of 6y squared. What I'd like you to do after you write this down, I want you to write the word product property. That's what we're about to use. It's what's called the product property. Now, here's where students mess up. They, they add the exponents, but they forget they're supposed to actually multiply the numbers. So we are actually going to multiply 6 times 9. And what's 6 times 9? 6 times 2. Okay? But right here, we have x to the power of 4, right? Times, we have x to the power of 6. What are we allowed to do with those exponents? What's the product product? Are we allowed to do what with them? Add them together. So I get this x to the 10. x to the power of 10. Over here, we have y cubed times y squared. What are we allowed to do with these exponents? Add them together and you get y to the power of 5. This becomes y to the power of 5. This is your final answer. I have seen this type of question on the star test so many times for after I see the release test. It's like, this is, you need to know how to do what property? The product property and the power property. And you have to know how to find the area of a what? Rectangle. Which is what? Length times width. That's it. Will that formula ever change? Nope, no. <laughs> so this answer is answer choice eight. <laughs> answer choice eight. What did what what did the students do in answer choice eight with the powers? What did they do accidentally? They multiply. They multiply. Okay? So that's where you gotta be careful. So everybody, here's a quick review. Here's a quick little review. One of these answers is x to the power of 6. One of these answers is x to the power of 5. What goes where? What answer do you think this one is right here? That's the 6. Which means what does this one have to be? What did we do with these two? We multiply them. What did we do with these two? We you have to see the difference between those two. This is about the best little, quick little example I can give you. Hopefully help you understand the concept between the power property and the product property. All right, now we've got some easy ones. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to highlight some things real quick. I'm going to highlight this. Let me do that a little bit more. There we go. We're going to take care of this individually. Right here, we're going to reduce that first. Okay? Then we're going to simplify this section right too much. Right here, we're going to take care of that next. We'll do this in green. And then we'll do this. Magenta or purple or lavender, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So the very first thing, let's reduce 16 divided by 12. Now you guys have a graphing calculator, right? Could you guys type that in the graphing calculator the math button, press enter twice? Absolutely. How do we do it by hand? We just divide both sides by the greatest common factor, which is 4. And that becomes 4 over 3. But let's say you didn't know that. You're like, I'm just not good with multiplication times. You can do 16 divided by 12. Then do what? Hit the math button, press enter twice, and voila! What do you get? Four over three. There you go. Alright? So we know one of our answers is going to be a four over a three. Now we're going to focus on just the a variable. Here we go. Everybody, every single time right now, we are going to be using the quotient property. We're going to use it for this one, we're going to use it for this one, and we're going to use it for this one. I'm just doing them in different colors. Here we go. A to the power of 5 minus open parentheses negative 4. That's how you set up A. B to the power of 7 minus 3. C to the power of negative 5 minus <coughs> open parentheses negative 2. Close parentheses. Now, there's something that I did that maybe 
We have some questions about how you don't. You may have any questions about how I set those up or why I did what I did. Alright, if you were to look at these three problems right here, what do two of them have that one of them does not? Parentheses. That's right, parentheses. Now, the reason why I put a parentheses here and a parentheses here is because we were taking away a negative. Here, were we taking away a negative right there? No, we weren't taking away a negative. Okay? So, could you, is it, is it, could you do this? Could you just do minus? Sure, that's fine. You could do that if you wanted to. Alright? I just, I didn't, but you could if you wanted to. Now, what am I trying to tell everybody to be very, very, very careful of? What is a negative times a negative? Positive. So here's what I want you to write. So a to the power of 5 plus 4. So this one actually gives us a to the power of 9. This one over here, this is just 7 minus 3, and we all know what 7 minus 3 is. It's what you say when you almost hit somebody in a golf. Four. That's right, four. But it, that's spelled F O R E. Just it's a homonym. It sounds the same. Okay. And the last one over here, we have C to the negative five. But what am I going to do? What's a negative and a negative? It makes a. Four. That's right. Plus two. Ooh, kind of tricky. Negative five plus two. Negative three. You're right. C to the power of negative two. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put everything where it needs to be. You guys see this a to the power of 9? Just put it right up here. Does everybody see b to the power of 4? Put it right up there. Now watch this. If I put c to the negative third right there, does that sit well with you or do you think we need to do something with that negative exponent? You can kind of make it a positive, and where are we going to put it? On the bottom. That's right. We're going to take it, we're going to put it right down there, and when we move it down to the bottom, that becomes C cubed. So now I moved it. Yay. Now I can say bye-bye. I moved it. So remember, C to the power of negative 3 actually means 1 over C cubed, or C to the power of 3. All right? So bye, everybody. This is your final answer. Right? Where? Right? There. That is your final answer. So like, uh, what's that answer for our answer choice? Which one answer is it? Let's look. It is C. Answer choice C. Right there. There's your answer choice. Okay? Alright. Here we go, everybody. We're doing the next one. We're going to do it step by step. Okay? So step by step. Math teaches you how to get things organized. So we're going to organize this right here. So if you wanted to, you could write it down and just box it in. We're going to do this one right here. We're going to do this one right here. I realize I kind of overlapped that, so well. So this makes this color even too. There we go. Just break it down step by step by step. Don't fall down. But if you do fall down, what do you do? Get back up, right. Failure is not falling down. Failure is staying down. Mm -hmm. Failure is not falling down. Failure is staying down. Like you quit. That's when you fail, when you quit. Alright, what, what can we reduce that to? What do you guys think we can reduce that to? Uh, 33 to 22 is divisible by 11. You got it, boom. 3 over 2. Okay. That's a three over two. Okay. 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 So now we're this is how we're gonna do the A. We're just gonna do the A, right? A to the seven minus predict what I'm gonna write. Oh, what is this T? That's right. Okay, there we go. B to the power of eight minus six. Oh, uh, you didn't use parentheses there. Why did I not use parentheses there? It's just back. It's not, it's not a negative. I don't have to worry about that. This is easy. <coughs> okay. All right. And then we got C to the negative 5 minus. Uh oh. What am I going to put? That's right. I'm going to what? There you go. That's how I want you to set them up. Right there. Set them up. First one is this one. 
a negative and a negative, let's make it a positive. That's going to be a to the power of 7 plus 2, which gets us to a to the power of 9. The next one is easy. 8 minus 6 is 2. This one is the tricky one. This one's the tricky one. We have negative 5. Oops, I put the wrong negative 5. Negative 5. Negative times a negative makes it a positive. We put plus 3. Uh oh. Say that again? You're right. B to the power of negative 2. So, everybody, what we're going to do is we're going to use this, we're going to use this, and we're going to use this right now. We're going to take those answers and watch where I'm going to put them. A to the power of 9, B to the power of 2, C to the negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and extend this a little bit longer right here. Okay. So what are we going to first use? A to the power of 9. I'm going to put that right here. A to the power of 9. Then I'm going to put B to the power of 2. Then I'm going to put C to the power of negative 2. Which one has to leave? Which one has to leave, Abigail? C, that's right. Sorry, C. you got to leave. Why does C have to leave? Because it's negative and we need to make it positive. We're going to move that way. Put C squared down there. Wait, so if it's not a negative, you leave it. You leave it. Okay. I think you have to be in a more positive world. Okay? So if it's negative, move it to make it positive. If it's in the denominator, move it to the numerator. If it's in the numerator, move it to the denominator. And watch this. This is going to make it relax. So Alright, stop being so dead up negative. Be positive. So, how about a quick little review? Let's see if you guys can do this. Ready? This right here, if I say simplify that, what would you guys tell me the answer is to this problem right here? Make this right. This is wrong. Make it right. What should we do? Then tell me what goes here. B. A to the power of 5. So we make this positive, we move it up. We take this and we move it down. Right now, put an example and write this down. This is an example to help you know how to change negative exponents to positive exponents. All right, so now we need to find this particular answer. This answer was answer choice. Hold on, hold on. That looks like it's A. Yep, it's A. It is answer choice. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. First, yeah. First one. Yeah. All right, everybody right now, here's what I need you guys to do. I need you guys to write. We're going to talk about how to simplify radicals, but we're going to be talking about perfect <coughs> squares. Perfect squares, everybody. So what I want you to do right now is we're going to draw some perfect squares. <coughs> And I'm stopping right here. Okay? One of these squares. Oh, yeah. Trying to draw something here to the best of my ability. Maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't, but either way, hopefully it'll get the concept. Not to be perfect, but hopefully enough for you to understand what we're doing. Alright. So, these are the perfect squares that you must know the answer to without the use of a graphing calculator.
So what are perfect squares? Now this is an example of a one by one square. So this area, the area of this little square is one unit squared. But this little square is a two by two, and this area is considered to be four units squared. And this square, it's not very drawn very well, but you can see that's a three by three. And this area is going to be what's called nine units squared. By the way, did, do we in the real world use square units for measurement? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you go to Lowe's or any flooring department or paint department, what do they sell everything in? Square, square feet, square yards, and uh, your square meters. Okay? All right? So, what is one squared? One. What is two squared? Four. What is three squared? Nine. Four. Why is it nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How many is that? One, two, three, four. How many is that? One. I'm not going to do another one. Because it makes it harder and harder to draw. Yes, four by four gets you how many square units? Sixteen. A five by five, how many square units? Twenty-five. Then what? Thirty-six. Good. Forty-nine. Good. Keep going. Wait. Nope. Nope. Boom. Sixty-four. You got it. Hey, you're doing good. You're doing good. Here we go. Nine times nine. Boom. Ten times ten. That's an easy one, right? Okay. Now we get into the. Boom! 121. Now what is this? Before we move on, what is what does that mean? If I made a square that wasn't not a three by three, but an eleven by eleven, how many little tiny square units would be inside of that square? 121 little square units. Twelve squared is what? 144. Thirteen times thirteen? One sixty-nine. Fourteen times fourteen? One ninety-six. Then you got two twenty-five. Then you got two fifty-six. Then you got 289. Try to keep up with that calculator, right? <laughs> All right? Yeah, that's what I thought so. All right? So we got 361 and 400. All right, I know students over here trying to use a calculator. By the way, what's the fastest calculator in the world? That's your own brain. Your own brain, Dad it. All right? <laughs> All right? So, by the way, should you put these to memorization? Yes. Up to 20, you should memorize. Because when you guys are simplifying radicals, you are using perfect squares when you are simplifying radicals. So make sure you get them all down in your journal. Like that. Okay. Now, why would we need to know our perfect squares? Because there's a special symbol called a radical, also known as a square root symbol. And when I put a square root symbol, even though you can't see it, there is a number that goes in there, even though you can't see it. That number is a 2. So if I say, what is the square root? of 49, you're going to say the square root of 49 is a 7. Why? Because it breaks down perfectly into 7 times 7. And square roots look for groups of 2. That's why you can simplify it to a 7. So if I say, what's the square root of 169, you're going to say that answer is 13. Why? Because it breaks down perfectly into 13 times 13 square roots look for groups of 2, so you can pull a 13 out. That's what we're going to be doing on the next few problems, okay? So here we go. Let's look, at the, let's look at our next problem. Can you zoom out? Right here, we're going to simplify this. So here we go. We're going to teach you how to simplify this radical right here. Now, radicals that are inside, we have to look for perfect <laughs> squares hidden inside of it. So I'm going to break this down. I'm going to break this down into a 100 and a 63. How did I know a 100 was hidden inside there? Because that's 63 to 100, right? And there's two zeros right there, right? Now, what does a 100 break down to? 10 times 10. You're right. It is 50 times 2. But why would I choose a 10? Oh, okay. you got to find the pairs. Now, everybody... 63 can be broken down into a 9 and a 7. Ooh, 9 can be broken down into a 3 and a 3. Is there a pair there? So watch. What is able to be pulled out? 1, 10. What's already out there? 5. 
What else can be pulled up? One, three. Okay? So, everybody, let me show you kind of what, what, we, uh, what we have here. What do we already have on the outside right here? We have a five, right? If I said five times radical 100 times radical 9 times radical 7, what is 100 times 9 times 7? 100 times 9 times 7 is 6300. But what is the square root of 100? Square root of 100? Yeah, 10. What is the square root of 9? 3. And we can't take the square root of 7, so what do we just leave it at? We just leave it at the square root of 7. What is 5 times 10 times 3? 5 times 10 times 150. 50 times 3 is 150. Your simplified answer is 150 radical 7. 3 times 10 times 5. 100. The answer to this problem is answer choice D. Okay? Now, right now, this is kind of difficult because you guys aren't used to simplifying radicals. But we're going to have more practice simplifying radicals. So listen up. Right here. Does everybody see that the square root of 100 is 10? The square root of 9 is 3. But guess what we can't simplify? We cannot simplify the square root of 7. So what do we just leave it as? Square root of 7. And then we did 5 times 10 times 3. Okay? We'll do another one. Okay, here we go. Everybody, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you guys to write this out, just like this. Write it down. Do 6,750 over 392. Now, both of these are divisible by. Why do I know these are both divisible by 2? Because that ends in a 0, that ends in a 2. And anything that ends in a 0 and a 2 definitely is divisible by 2. So, here's what I want you to write next. If I take half that, that's 3,375. If I take half of this, that's 196. So what was the very first thing that we did? We reduced the amount. There's no way I'd ever be able to just reduce that Fraction. What do you have? A graphing cabinet. Watch this. If I did 6, 7, 5, 0, don't worry, we're doing the same numbers. Divided by 3, 92. We hit the math button, you press enter twice. What do you get? 3, 3, 7, 5 over 196. That's exactly what we have right there. Okay. Next step. Watch this. Tell me what you see different. What do you see is different between? So there's a radical on top and there's a radical on the bottom. This is what I need you guys to write in your journal this time. If you have the square root of A over the square root of B, that is the same thing as saying the square root of A over the square root of B. Okay? Can you guys, can you guys write that down in your journal? This rule, you need to be able to apply this rule. This <coughs> fraction is equal to this fraction. Okay? Pause the video. See that 196? See that 196? What do you think the square root of 196 is equal to? 14. No. So, right now, automatically, what is in this denominator? What is that equal to? That's equal to a 14. So that becomes that. Alright? So what's the only thing we have to simplify now? 3,375. We got to, how do we do that? What is always divisible into anything that ends in a five. five? A five, right? So here we go. Everybody, let's build a factor tree. You should have done this before this year. If you have never done this, then shame on your math teachers. We're going to do factor trees. We're going to do a five. So do 3,375 divided by five. Do it right now. Tell me what you get. 675. 75. Is that have a 5 at the end? Guess what? Break it down. What you got? 135. 135. Oh, that ends in a 5. 
27. Holy cow. You're right. Guess what? Now we got to break down the... No. That's a 9 and a 3. Holy cow. That's a 3 and a 3 and we're done. Holy cow. So listen up. I want you to tell you what this is easy. We have a 5, a 5, and a 5. And we have a three, a three, and a three. And all of those are underneath. If I say the square root of this, that's all of these underneath that. Okay? So I'm gonna try, right now I'm gonna prove to you that this and this are the same. Okay? So I'm gonna go to the calculator right now. I'm gonna type in. Bless you. I'm gonna type in. Five times five times five times three times three times three. And look what we get. <clears throat> what are these, Paul? Those are all considered to be prime factors. So everybody, could you guys list these right here? These are all considered to be prime factors. Does anybody know how to rewrite 5 times 5 times 5? A more <laughs> That's how you that's how you can get this, okay? Five cubed times three cubed. Okay? So I'm gonna go back here. Hopefully, what have I proved to you right now? I proved to you that this and this are the same. What do square roots look for? Groups of what? Groups of two. Gonna circle a group of two. Gonna circle a group of two. So what comes out of the radical? A five and a three. three. What is five times three? Fifteen. What stayed inside of it? A 5 and a 3, which 5 times 3 is also? So I'm going to highlight something. This right here. What is this ultimately simplified to? That simplifies to this. What does this simplify to right here? That the square root of 196 is? So this was, would you agree this was the easy one right here? That was easy, okay? This one was the more difficult one. This is your answer. 5, radical 15 over 14. Which is answer choice? H. Okay? Alright? So not to quit, we have two more minutes. Two more minutes, we can do two problems in two minutes. Alright? By the way, it says write an expression that represents a simplified radical for keyword. What does it say? Real numbers. Okay? I don't have time to go into it. You'll get this in algebra 2. But the square root of negative 200 is not a real number. It's an error. Non-real answer. Okay? Now, let me explain to you real quick what the answer would be if you were in algebra 2. Okay? The answer would be... Now, that breaks down to... 100 and a 2, that breaks down to a 10 and a 10. So if I said, what's the square root of 200? Your answer would actually be 10 radical 2. What makes this a non-real answer? Because there's a negative. negative. However, the answer for algebra 2 would be 10i radical 2 because the square root of negative 1 is equal to the imaginary number called i. And that's, you're not going to get that until algebra 2. So this one, this answer is for problem number nine is D. D. No simplification for real numbers. Yes. And the last one. Everybody, the last one. I will do this very quickly. You can look back at it later. Just watch and learn. If you want to watch the video later, you can. I'm letting you guys know. Two forty-three is broken down to five threes being multiplied to each other. Square root of 36 is a couple of sixes. So the denominator equals a six. That's a group of three. That's a group of three. That becomes nine radical three over six. Nine six produces two. Three over two. So the final answer for number ten was H. Okay? So, what does the square root of 243 break down to? 9 radical 3. What is the square root of 36? 
6. What does that simplify or reduce to? 3 over 2. That is the answer for number 10.